Shut up and sit down. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, it's where the big boys play. SICW. <clears throat> Anyway, welcome to Square Root Podcast, everybody. Episode 73. Today is all about the ear, the Cauliflower Alley Club. We have Bobby D and Jim, the Big Texan Hope Club. How's it going, everybody? Good. Not bad, not bad. Okay, and I did something like I said I was going to do, because we're going to start doing more things in the studio here. I went ahead and had the AC fixed, so now you guys won't die when you're here. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god you know my ac stays on 24 7 and uh matter of fact it's at 68 degrees right now i don't think i can make it in your house mine uh, is currently at 74 because i got mad at my 450 fifty dollar power bill wow <laughs> Well, Mine is see, at 71 degrees right now. Mine, uh, my power bill is not too bad. You know, a couple of years ago, I had the house insulated and a new unit put in. Uh, and I don't know, it, it ranges around 250, I guess, every month. It's, it's not horrible. It's not bad at all. But uh, it's uh, not bad. Yeah, it's definitely when you walk in, you can feel it. Feel the difference. I'm gonna have to kill my dogs. <laughs> they didn't want to go outside. Now they're just gonna bark. They just saying hello. When, when they came out to what to look at and fix the AC, they were surprised on the size of the unit that I have for this place. It should the unit should be for the house three times the size. They're like sure. this is the unit. You- it's what they that's, said. That's what they always say. Oh, your unit's three times as big as <laughs> what it should be. You said they said that because I was paying for it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> you little thing. <laughs> bad, bad name. <clears throat> anyway. All right, let's get love. into the ear. I would love for all three of us to actually get into a studio and actually uh, get it done like that at least once or twice. You know, we always come here on the, on this where Bobby cons- consistently, like, touches his picture. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, yeah. So I got a new Bobby, setup. I'm trying to figure everything out here. <laughs> have you got your copy of uh, the ear yet? I have not. Really? I haven't checked my mail in a couple of days either. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you probably got it because uh, I got it just a couple of days ago, so you'll you'll probably have it by then. But anyway, so the CACs is uh, next month. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, with the nineteenth uh, through the twenty first. Does that sound about right, Bobby? Uh, yes. <laughs> so I was looking at flying in on the 18th. Yeah. I've been I've been working on booking my uh, flights and everything. 18th fly in, fly home 22nd. Yeah. Oh, you're flying in on the 18th, huh? Well, the day before. I don't want to miss the opening show. No, okay. Yeah, but that makes sense. Uh, I haven't booked my uh, my uh, uh, plane ride either. You I've only booked on my only... <laughs> I say I've only booked well, the flight time, home. I said, I only booked the flight home in the hotel. I haven't booked the flight there yet. <laughs> Might for them to drop a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, so on our streak of talking about Hall of Fames and fan fests and everything like that, this one is the Cauliflower Alley uh, Club. And this one, I think... I think it, it's on its own level. You know, most of these uh, Hall of Fames, uh, you know, they celebrate the wrestler, which this one does as well. Uh, but this one uh, tries to earn money for 
you know, the wrestlers that came down in uh, hard times or, you know, uh, medical bills or, you know, something that's, uh, well, here, the CAC mission statement is financially to assist those in the wrestling industry that have fallen on hard financial times. So the whole point of the CAC is to raise money for wrestlers that, uh, like I said, they didn't have no retirement. Uh, you know, if they, they didn't have any medical, uh, so any one of those that are in the, you know, have medical bills, or I've seen them pay uh, uh, taxes on houses before. Uh, I've seen definitely on medical bills because uh, someone close to all of us on the St. Louis side had that, uh, needed that help. Um, but yeah, it's, I think I'm flashing in and out. Did I disappear on you guys? No, but you're frozen with your mouth I open. You froze, but we can like still you hear you. are in the locker room, frozen there with your mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, speaking of mouth being open, have any of you guys seen Deadpool yet? Deadpool versus Wolverine. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm I'm going, we were all going to go watch it. Because we all had talked about it, all of us going together. Oh, well. Man, is this just my phone that's... Is the name something up? I'm no, not I'm seeing Nathan right now. Huh. All of a sudden, like, one of you guys would drop off the phone, and then all of you guys would drop off the phone, even me, and then it would all pop back up. Yeah, no, no. I see everybody fine. And everybody coming through. You, you're, we do, we, we do have a storm going through, so it could be. Oh, that could be it, then. All right, um... So yes, it's a great organization. You know, they're there that's trying to earn money. Uh, and one way of earning money uh, is to have uh, this banquet slash dinner slash their version of the Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, they actually uh, celebrated on two nights. Um, the Bachwinkle Blowout is one night. And um, then the next night is... Uh, can't remember what the name of the next night is, but it's a big fancy dinner where the Nick Bockwinkle blowout is like a bologna, it, bologna sandwiches and stuff like that. And then the next night is the fancy dinner. Normally uh, that night, uh, the, the main awards are handed out, um, but they got so many because it, it covers two days. Uh, so the very first picture you showed was Kurt Angle. He's, of course, on the cover of the magazine. And this magazine comes out twice a year. Uh, the first one uh, you get in the beginning of the year is normally covering what happened last year. Um, then it also kind of covers if, uh, unfortunately, if a, a legend passes away or if you, if, if they hear that they're having hard times, you know, they'll put a, a little message together about that. Um, but the one that just came out is for, uh, to tell you what about, uh, uh, the reunion that's coming up uh, in August is all about and uh, what their awards are and who's winning the awards. And I tell you, there's a lot of legends, current, current legends, I would say, too. It's not, I mean, some of them are retired, but they are currently just retired, you know, uh, like Sting. Um, you know, Sting is going from the Iron Mike, uh, Mazaruki uh, Award. Uh, Sting just retired this year, so I mean, that's how current it is. And I might have butchered that last name because Iron Mike, um, you know, that's pretty familiar because a lot of uh, wrestlers like uh, Iron Mike DiBiase use that uh, moniker, that Iron Mike, um, before. But uh, yeah, so Sting's getting that one. Uh, Kurt Angle is getting the Luthez Art uh, Abrams Award. Um, we can go kind of like what we did before, if you want, kind of go about what these awards actually mean. Because in this magazine, it goes through each each person that's winning it, what the award is. Um, 
Well, I only have one of the billings for the award from, you know, going down to the Melody Historian Award, starting with the Men's Wrestling Award. I only have that building up. Okay. Well, there's actually three of those sections. I guess I didn't send you the other two. But I sent you, I think, every picture uh, <laughs> of the people, except for Sting. Um, but, yeah, so uh, there's a Carl Lawler Independent Promoter Award. Now, Carl Lawler, uh, he was uh, the Missouri, he was a promoter in California uh, for the longest time. And uh, he had a lot of legends on his, in his promotion. Uh, you know, Andre the Giant was in there, um, you, know, you know, Butch Reed and uh, a lot of legends uh, went through his promotion. But he passed away a few years ago, but before he passed away, he was one of the guys in Missouri that made sure that your licenses uh, were up to date. You had your blood work, your physicals, um, and he would uh, come to uh, as many Missouri shows as he could to make sure that all the wrestlers on the Missouri side were all up to date. And uh, he was a, a very nice man. I, I sat and talked to him a lot of times. Um, a lot of times, too, that the uh, he would just sit in the audience because he was still a wrestling fan. So a lot of times, uh, the people that, uh, you know, check your licenses, they just do that in the beginning, and then they disappear in the scenery background somewhere, you know, because they did their job. They also collect the money for the state. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, this year was, I think this year was the first year that was a little different, where you, for every person that came in, you had to pay a dollar, the promoter had to pay a dollar to the state for it. So if you had 370 people show up to your show, you had to pay the state $370. You know, it's, it's a way for the state uh, to earn more money for these guys to sit there and travel and go to all these shows and uh, you know, basically for their gas mileage and their time away. Uh, but Carl Lawler, he was a great guy. Uh, yeah, but he passed away. I want to say it was about two years ago he passed away. But anyway, uh, a promoter, and I don't know this promoter, but David McLean, sorry, David McLean uh, won this uh, award. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to listen about his promotion. Because um, uh, last year it was a lot of, uh, well, I guess it was Canadian and Texas. Uh, they talked about all the promotion stuff in Canada. And, uh, of course, uh, we talked about JBL and our uh, uh, James Beard, our good friend. Uh, they did their own little seminar about Texas wrestling last year. Uh, but uh, so, so, so I just Googled him real quick. He's actually the creator of Glow and Wow. Okay, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, uh, I think there was a lot of Glow wrestlers uh uh, last time at the CAC, so that could be why. Uh, not the reason why he won the award, but an influx of the glow wrestlers coming through. You know, uh, and we had some glow, well, no, yeah, we had some glow wrestlers coming into our fan fest too. Uh, it, you know, and it's uh, surprisingly how uh, all the awards places like uh, Iowa and CAC and our fan fest. A lot of times they mirror each other with people like the names of the award. Uh, Iowa and uh, CAC both have a Lou Fez Award. Um, and sometimes it mirrors the same people. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Announcer Award this year. I think this is actually the first year for the Announcer Award for the CAC. And that's going to Jim Ross. And, uh, you know, uh, Iowa had a, a Gordon Soley Award that Jim uh, Jim Ross won uh, a few years ago. Uh, and then this year it was Tony Savani that won it. Uh, there's a, a Women's Wrestling Award, and that's uh, going to an Allison Danger. And in the, in the magazine, you know, like I said, it talks a little about each person. So it actually talks about her. And she was in Ring of Honor. Um, she's actually retired from wrestling now because I think the last time she wrestled was in 2012. So 
So it was like in the beginnings of uh, uh, Ring of Honor, but she was uh, born in Canada and then went down to uh, like Pennsylvania area. Uh, I guess uh, let's see here. Uh, multiple independent companies, Northeast and Japan, which landed her in Ring of Honor. So, uh, but yeah, so she's winning the mm-hmm. Women's Wrestling Award. Looks like uh, she also worked in uh, Shimmer and ECW with her brother Steve Carino. Wow, I and didn't put that in here that her brother was Steve Carino. Well, they probably want that to be more about her than her family in there. That's true. You know, uh, Steve Perino, he's got a son that's in NXT right now. <clears throat> family tradition, man. All right. Uh, uh, a small, unheard of uh, tag team. Um, the Dudley Boys are winning uh, the tag team award. You know, the Dudley, Bo- the Dudley Boys are probably one of the most honored uh, tag teams around there. You know, uh, they won the TNA tag team straps, the ECW tag team straps, the WWE tag team straps. Um, I mean, I don't think they've been in uh, AEW yet, <laughs> but, you know, uh, was it uh, Devon Dudley just actually retired because he had a medical issue, but uh, Bubba, I know he... He's wrestled in uh, the new version of NWA. He was in Ring of Honor for a little bit. I think he jumped back in the TNA. Uh, so Bubba's still very active. And uh, he uh, also helps roast, uh, host the Busted Open uh, radio uh, podcast as well. Um, him, Mark Henry. Uh, there's a couple other wrestlers that kind of co-host this thing. Uh, but... Uh, Yes, I mean, uh, if you're going to honor a tag team, why not the, the, the Dudley boys? Uh, so there, yeah, was I, a, there was a TNA, <clears throat> when, they, when they left WWE and went to TNA, there was like one promo that they did that really laid it out, and they like brought this trunk to the ring and then pulled out a title for every title they've won. And Jesus, it was a lot. I believe they were feuding with the Steiner brothers at the time, who were also had a long list. I want to say they were uh, uh, new. What was it new pro? Uh, they were a Japanese uh, tag team uh, champions as well. Uh, but I don't know if it was new all pro Japan. Uh, but uh, yeah, I remember that that they had uh, you know so many tag team belts that they pulled out of that thing. Uh, I don't know. I really liked uh, uh, Bubba when he and Devon first started in the WWE. Now, I knew them from from ECW, but I think uh, the whole stuttering that Bubba was doing in the very beginning when he first came out, I really, really liked that version. Uh, you know, it's just funny as hell, you know, because he would just stutter, stutter after every single word, and uh, they would smack the back of his head so he could actually spit it all out. Um, but uh, then he had that singles run in TNA, uh, where I think he actually became the heavyweight champion of that uh, organization for a while. And he was feuding with Hulk Hogan. And because uh, I remember the whole storyline. He was actually seeing Hulk Hogan's daughter, and they were planning on getting married and everything like that. It's pretty funny. And to go against Hogan with the world's largest arms, he was the man with the world's largest calves. <laughs> point down to the calf and have him zoom in. You know, the funny thing about that is, Nate, I don't know if you noticed this or not, most wrestlers that are all jacked up and have the awesome physiques do not have calves. Uh, most wrestlers, if, if you talk to them or listen to them talk about their time in the gym, they don't work their calves. And but, most of them don't even work their legs. You know, it's all about the upper body uh, that, the, that they work out. Well, most guys are chicken legs anyway. And, you know, it's 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 like that, too, because, uh, you know, Ron Powers, um, when I first switched from taking the mask off and going into this uh, cowboy gimmick, um, you know, going back home to Texas, 
uh, he offered me uh, his boots. Uh, well, not that he offered. I asked, and he, he willingly gave me his boots because he has uh, these cowboy wrestling boots, and they're very hard to come by, and they're very expensive. And they were the right size. You know, uh, I wore a size 12, sometimes 13. But I can't fit into them because my calves are so big. <laughs> yes. It's just funny to me that uh, a lot of wrestlers don't work out their calves. <clears throat> uh, the men's wrestling award is going to Buff Bagwell. Uh, you know, Buff has been uh, at our fan fest before. Um, you know, you know, of course, Buff is stuff. He was one of Bobby's favorite wrestlers. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> Bobby, I got to disagree with you. <laughs> was it? He was part of my favorite promotion. He wasn't one of my favorites. <laughs> you guys know yeah. Buff and I don't get along personally. I say I I did like his blockbuster finisher. That's the most I'll give him. You know, uh, I really liked Buff when he uh, first came into WCW. Uh, when he, he, I don't even know what you call his gimmick. His gimmick was just uh, a pretty boy, basically. And it, it wasn't you know fancy wise when he was uh, when he turned into the NWO. Uh, but I think him and uh, I want to say it was Alex Wright or a tag team and uh you know they 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 look like two pretty boy tag team guys but they i liked them they were kind of cool uh and then he when the nwo first started coming around uh that's when he slowly made his change into buff bagwell and buff is the stuff uh but i gotta give it to him he did break his neck in the ring and he came back from that uh, Rick Steiner is actually the one that broke his neck. Uh, he was giving him a bulldog off, uh, off the corner. I don't know if it was off the top rope. I want to say it was off the top rope, but he gave him the bulldog and he just jerked his neck and landed in the wrong way and actually broke it. Uh, but, uh, when he came back, that's when he started making that transition into the NWO version of Buff Bagwell. But he made a lot of money with that version, too, so I can't. And he just had one of those, uh, uh, it's not behind the scenes. What's the name of that uh, TV program? That, uh, dark Side of the Ring? Dark Side of the Ring. He just had a Dark Side of the Ring episode on him. And it, they did kind of get into that, uh, you know, Bobby has previously talked about the little uh, soft core porn stuff that he used to do after... <laughs> Uh, he quit wrestling. Uh, well, I give him all the credit for coming back from a broken neck, but still not going to make me think any different from it on a personal level. Still don't like him. Well, I I'll tell you one thing. Uh, it's all about perspective because some people just have a bad day and wrestlers are, are normal people. Uh, cause, uh, there's, uh, a female wrestler that, um, I was introduced and I felt snubbed, but the next time that female wrestler was in town, um, some people were introducing, uh, one of our rookies to them and she was the nicest person to, to the rookie. Uh, so it's. You know, you just got to take it. Everyone has a bit of, uh, bad, shitty day. And uh, I, I want to take it personal because... Uh, no, he didn't what... snub me. He don't remember. He put his hands on me, and I didn't like that. We didn't have a good conversation. <laughs> well, that's and he didn't put his hands on me again. Because he didn't like what I had to say. That's well, what I don't think. Everybody has a bad day. I get it. I have bad days, too. Yeah. And, so on know, another note, I found the tag team. It was Heavenly Males with Scotty Riggs. Scotty Riggs too. No, but I think he uh he t it was a tag team with Alex Wright as well. You know he had a couple of different tag teams. Yeah. Uh, Scotty Riggs. You know, speaking of him, he just came back into wrestling this year. And you know, it's so funny because I was on a podcast late last year. 
and uh, they were talking about mid-card wrestlers and who you would like to see come back. And just for shits and grins, I threw out his name. And they were like, oh, my God, we who would want to see this guy come back and wrestle? And then after that episode of Dark Side of the Ring, Scotty Riggs actually came back and started wrestling some matches. And uh, I thought it was just so funny because uh, out of the blue, I don't even know why I remembered Scotty Riggs during that podcast, but I just threw his name out and all of a sudden he come back and start wrestling. Probably could have been making career again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was probably trying to capitalize and I would have done the same thing, you know, because during uh, that episode dealing with Buff, his name was thrown out there a lot. And his pitcher, and I think uh, some of their early tag team matches were thrown out there. So, why not? You know, I would take, because uh, supposedly Scotty Riggs uh, was very bad off. He was living in a car, uh, you know, so he didn't have a place to stay. Uh, he was, uh, you know, bumming around for food and everything. So, you know, if that episode gave him a, a little bit of push, and he was able to get back into the wrestling ring. Sorry. And it seems like from the, at least that one wrestling match that I watched, just clips of, uh, they talked about how he still has it. So, who knows? We might see Sky Riggs in a, in a bigger promotion soon. Now, uh, they do offer uh, a Lucha Libre award. Uh, you know, uh, last year, uh, it was Damien 666. Uh, the year before, it was Rey Mysterio. Uh, the year before that, it was Conan. Uh, this year, I'm going to let Bobby Negro say that Casas. name. <laughs> I said his name's uh, Negro Casas. Thank you. Looks like he spent a lot of time in, like, AAA, and he's got... Uh, like he's he showed up in WWF and New Japan Pro Wrestling, CMLL, all kinds of places. His nephew's Puma. I've heard that name many times. Well, he's coming from a, a long wrestling family uh, heritage because I think his his dad and his uncle were both wrestlers as well. Because uh, it talked about that in uh, in the article that they wrote about him, about how he's got a family uh, lineage of wrestling. So I think that was. <clears throat> Pretty cool, because I think his family, let me see if, uh, I want to say it was in the 60s that his family started wrestling. I say he was born in 1960. Yeah, I've seen that. But I want to say his uncle or someone was wrestling in 1964, is what they said. But, uh, yeah, so they always offer a Lucha Libre Award, and, you know, rightly so, because... You know, uh, there's practically four styles of wrestling. You know, you got uh, Mexico wrestling, you got the uh, United States, you got Japan style, and then you got uh, like the British style. And, you know, the funny thing is Japan style and British style, that's known as the, uh, the hard style or uh, um, what they call it. It's not really hard style, but... Uh, It's like a, a tough man style of wrestling. And then you got the American style wrestling, but then you got the Mexico wrestling, which is uh, more of a showmanship uh, type of wrestling where they do a lot of acrobatic uh, wrestling style. Um, and if you ever watch uh, like the AAA or the CML, uh, you know, they don't believe in tagging much either. So you can watch a tag match and like everyone will be in the ring, everyone out of the ring, back in, they're all doing flips in and out. It's kind of crazy stuff. Uh, but it's definitely uh, a style of their own. And, uh, uh, you know, it came, you know, it's back in the day, it was always in California and places close to Mexico. Uh, they started creeping up there. But uh, I think it didn't really hit mainstream until ECW uh, picked a few people up and put them on their program. And then from there, it just exploded because WCW picked them up and then uh, WWE picked up Rey Mysterio and it, it just went crazy from there. But, 
No, I love watching Triple H seeing all the it's entertaining as hell, especially the car matches where they have the the ring there, and everybody sits in the in their cars and watches. Yeah, I've never seen that one, but uh, you uh, should. It's fun yeah. to watch. <laughs> I've watched Car <laughs> Jim. <Jiffy. clears throat> uh, yeah, I there was a a program that was not. It wasn't on too long, um, but it was. Uh, I think it was actually in California, but it was based off of Mexican wrestling. Um, and they kind of uh, did more. See, like Mexican storylines, there really weren't any storylines. Because like I said, they were, it was more of a sports, it was more of an entertainment. Um, but uh, Lucha Underground, uh, Lucha Underground, they uh, did a lot of storylines. Uh, and I kind of got into that, but uh, evidently that promoter, uh, spent way too much than what he made and uh, kind of sank the ship. Uh, but uh, uh, it's the promoter dilemma. You yeah, have to I mean, spend more was... to make more, but when do you stop? Now, uh, Red Bastine, you know, he was a wrestler from uh, you know, early, you know, from the 60s and early 70s. And uh, on our show, you know, Herb Simmons actually said that. His favorite wrestler was Red Ben uh, Red Benstein, uh, but they uh, have uh, the Friendship Award, and I'm not too sure who this who this person is, but Lori McGee Hurst is the so, one. So uh, I was gonna say I quickly read an article on her on the Cauliflower's page. Uh, basically, there is a lot of water damage to the Texas Museum for Wrestling, and she took time off her work and everything and helped save a bunch of that stuff. And so she's helping preserve the history of from the Museum of Texas Wrestling. So well, speaking of that, there's uh, a James Melby uh, Award. And I think uh, Iowa has the same one, but it, it's a historian award. And uh, Jason Presley, I'm not too sure who that is either. And he's not uh, the 90210 guy, uh, but uh, uh, he has won the historian award. So that kind of goes along with that friendship with uh, with Lori trying to save all that stuff as well. Are you uh, searching him real quick? Yep. <laughs> he was farther down on my list. I wasn't there yet. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, while you're searching him, uh, him uh, Charlie Smith Referee Award is going to Bill Alfonso. Now, uh, Bill Alfonso, he was mainly known uh, in the later years for being RVD's manager. Uh, he would always come down, and it, it would annoy the shit out of me, too, because he would blow a whistle the whole time RVD's wrestling. And, uh, yeah, it just drove me nuts. Like, shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> but he was RVD's manager. But he's been a referee for the longest time because he wrestled in W. I mean, he refereed in WCW, NWA, and the old NWA, not the new uh, faction of NWA. Uh, Mid South. I mean, he re refereed all over the place, and so he had a very long career. Yeah, let's talk about Vampire Jackson. He's getting an award down there too, isn't he? Yes. So just like there is an in independent promoter award, there's an independent wrestler award. And Gary Jackson is the man for this one. So um, not only did Gary, this is the year for Gary Jackson. You know, he uh, was inducted into the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame. And now he's being inducted into the CAC Hall of Fame. Um, nice article about him. You know, they talked about how he wrestled for Central States. Um, you know, talked about how he wrestled for w, uh, WWF, WCW. Uh, talked about a couple of guys he wrestled against. Um, you know, like the One Man Gang and Demolition. And, of course, we all talked about him going against Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels and, um, you know, everyone. So, you know, Gary's been around the block. Uh, but they also talked about his secrets about how he never ages. Uh, now, they didn't come out and say that he's a vampire, which we all know he is a vampire. Um, we know he is. They, they did talk about how he never ages and he looks the same as he did when he's 
first started wrestling. Uh, so uh, uh, very well deserved uh, wrestler, not only because he's uh, like a mentor to me and Bobby, uh, he definitely helped me and Bobby train. Uh, he's one of those guys that even though he will kick the shit out of you, because I've told him many a times, uh, dude, you know, pull back on your fucking kicks, you know, because he, he, he will swear up, kick you in the fucking mouth, and it will fucking hurt. And, uh, you, you know, when you get in the bag, you're like, dude, did I owe you money? What the fuck? You know, <laughs> but, uh, and I always give him shit about it, too. But um, he's a great guy. I'm so glad that he's earned this title. You know, even though he's only 23, he's got like 50 years in the business. Uh, and it's well deserved that he's getting that uh, award. <clears throat> so, did you, did you he, find yeah, he's written a, at least one book about Alabama wrestling. And then uh, he's a longtime writer for slamwrestling.net. Okay. So, probably another book or two of his you can buy when we're there at CAC. Man, I don't know. I am so far behind. I haven't even got to my stack of books that I showed you guys last time. I started reading uh, the first chapter uh, in one of the books, uh, but uh, work's just been kind of crazy. It's going to be crazy this week, too, because, uh, you know, a lot of places flooded uh, a couple weeks ago here in the yes. Illinois area. Uh, well, it turns out that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the state and Frodo might uh, consider that a disaster area uh, where it mainly flooded, kind of like they did a few years ago. I guess it was about three years, three years ago when it, you know, uh, some other places was flooding. Well, I don't know if you guys have seen pictures of the fairgrounds that day, but the fairgrounds, I mean, the it looked like a lake with a building in the middle of it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was that bad. Um, well, the creek in my backyard, I walked up and I was walking through the house and looking out the back, and it was just a river. Oh, yeah. There was no creek, it was a river. An eight, you know, my acre and a half back to the creek, so halfway about an acre up. A little more rain, and that would have been on my back door. Well, I tell you. <laughs> When it rains really hard and it floods, it floods in my house. Uh, it floods in my basement. But the thing is, is my house sits on like the bottom of the hill. Uh, so like the backyard is definitely higher up. So it all floods down to the house. And I think that's why they, uh, the people who built this house, built the garage into the basement. So there's a garage door. So. It like makes its way into the basement and then out the garage door and then down to the end of the, the hill. So it's like a flash flood. <laughs> you know, it's a little weird. But I think it's also due to uh, when this house was first built, it had uh, one of those containers for your water, for your, you know, for your sewer water. Septic I think tank. It had a, yeah, a septic tank. And I think that. Uh, you know, most of the time uh, they fill that with sand or dirt when they convert the house. And the house has been converted, but I think somehow it, uh, you know, that septic tank that's built into the ground still gets water into it and it seeps into the into the basement. I always go <laughs> to the left there. <laughs> we All right, our way so, it was the vampire talk that got it. Yes. So uh, before we even started this show, you know, Nathan asked me why why I sent him a picture of uh, Todd Bridges, and uh, you know, it was a very good question because I didn't even know why the CAC was honoring him until I got my copy of the year and was reading about it. Now I know that they have uh, they call it a real award now. Here's a little trivia for you. When the CAC first got together, it really wasn't about wrestling. It was an, an actor's uh, award place uh, for actors uh, who fell in hard times. And then, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, ac 
actor, if, if you have a good movie or if you're in a TV series for a long period of time, they put you to where you have health insurance for the rest of your life. Well, back in the day, just like back in the day in wrestling, they didn't have that. And so the CAC was actually born to help actors uh, raise money in case in times of need. But then, you know, then it came along that, uh, you know, if you're an actor and you had a speaking role and uh, you had a good part, they automatically put you in the guild uh, and you got health uh, benefits for the rest of your life. So back in the day, they kind well, of you're a movie things. star, Jim. You got some speaking roles in your movie you were in. You should have health insurance for life. Uh, no, no, because it wasn't uh, uh, sanctioned. You know, it wasn't uh, uh, you have to have a SAG card and all that stuff, and I you ain't got none of that. Plus, mine was a documentary. It wasn't uh, like a movie. Um, but um, so back in the day, like I said, they kind of switched to boxing and wrestling, and then just eventually just switched to total wrestling. Uh, but the reels award was for a person outside of wrestling that had something to do with wrestling at some point in time. And evidently Todd Bridges was a longtime wrestling fan. And Hulk Hogan had a celebrity wrestling show. Uh, now, I did not know this. Uh, I knew when uh, he, uh, when WCW eventually folded, he had his own wrestling circuit um, that he tried to create with uh, uh, the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, and they had uh, the Nasty Boys, and it's a it was a sh very short-lived uh, wrestling promotion, but it was Hulk Hogan's wrestling promotion. Now, uh, so evidently, at some point in time, Hulk Hogan had a celebrity uh, wrestling thing where it was a competition. And, uh, you know, you, you, you trained, you wrestled, and then somehow someone in, uh, won it at the end. Uh, Todd Bridges did not win it, but uh, I think they actually said that the, he placed like third in this uh, celebrity wrestling promotion. Um, and I'll, I was trying to talk to you, too. Uh, he was, he stepped into the celebrity boxing when that was kind of big, where they would throw some celebrities every now and then into the boxing ring. And he actually boxed Vanilla Ice and beat Vanilla Ice. Uh, so okay. he, he, he won that match. Um, but, yeah, so in, uh, in the booklet, The Ear, it, he talks about how he was always a wrestling fan, and that's why he found out about the celebrity uh, promotion and immediately went for it. Um, so it was kind of cool. Uh, I did not know anything about that, you know, Hulk Hogan's promotion. So I was able to learn something new today because I learned that Todd was in it and there was actually a promotion for it. So kind of cool. Yeah, I learned something new too because I was getting pictures of wrestlers and then different strokes. Now, with all that said, you know, so, well, so besides the awards, uh, I was going to switch to a different topic, but I don't want to get off the CAC just yet. So besides the awards, they have different things. They have a meet and greet. Uh, one of the days uh, you can come up there and uh, the wrestlers are being awarded and sometimes the hosts, uh, like Medusa was the host last year. I think she's going to be the host this year as well. And uh, she's got a book out, so she's kind of, uh, you know, selling those books and autographing them. So there's a meet and greet one of the days where you can meet the wrestlers that are uh, being nominated and, and winning these awards or going into their Hall of Fame. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, there's a day that uh, they have, like, different things going on. Like, uh, uh, there's different seminars. Like, last year there was one based off of Texas wrestling. So it was like an hour, hour and a half where you can sit down and uh, you would have special guests, like I said, JBO <laughs> and James Beard did it last year, uh, where they talk about Texas wrestling, and uh, you, you kind of got the, the backstory of it, you know, of the territory system. Because the year before, it was about Memphis wrestling. 
and uh, you know they had uh, Jerry the King Lawler, Jimmy uh, Mouth of the South, and uh, all the Jarrets. And we talked about you know me and Bobby. That's the first time we were able to meet Jerry Jarrett. And then right after that, like a couple months later, Jerry passed away. Uh, so it's definitely something cool. Uh, not that Jerry passed away, but it's it's cool that you can go down there and meet these legends before shit like that happens. Uh, not saying that this class something's going to happen to him, but you never know. You never promise tomorrow. Um, but uh, it's kind of cool. Last year, besides the Texas, it was all about uh, Canadian wrestling as well. Uh, of course, there's no talk about Sean Vincent at all. Because uh, I guess uh, he, uh, on the popular Canadian wrestlers, he ranked so low uh, that, uh, you know, the, his name never came out of anyone's mouth. Um, yeah, they so didn't want was, to take people away. Right. So it was actually a good seminar. And uh, they're talking about good Canadian wrestling. Uh, and, uh, well, man, well, they won't take him back. We try to give them back, and they won't take him. Yeah, they won't have nothing <laughs> to do with them, so... It was a Canadian wrestler who won that award last year, too. Yeah. So, all right, this is uh, very cool to go to. And, like, uh, I think Bobby and I uh, talked about it last time, too. You, you just be walking around this hotel, rock, walking around the outside of the hotel, walking down the street of uh, uh, the strip. And you'll, you'll run into legends um, just sitting there. Like Damien 66 and RVD, as soon as you walked outside the hotel, they had an outside hotel bar. Uh, and they were just casually just sitting there, you know, having a drink. Uh, and you walk down the street, uh, down the strip, and uh, one of the nasty boys was just walking up and down the street, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm sure no one recognized them because it's Vegas. There's shit to look at all, you know, all day long. Um, but, uh, you know, we spent uh, breakfast. Uh, we had breakfast with Haku one morning. Most well, of that, that was one of my biggest surreal moments. Is we're sitting there just talking about life having breakfast with Haku. It's like, when else can you do it? Like, that's why I just pulled off my wall. Like, that's why I bid on the Mr. Wrestling 2 lifetime membership that I won. Like, Totally worth it. I'll be there every year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ragger. our little group, <laughs> you know, we had... I'm proud uh, of that. That's why I was on the wall. Yeah. I would be. Um, our little group uh, normally consisted of me and Bobby, uh, you know, Gary Jackson, and uh, I can't think of his name, but I see him every time. There's, a, you know, our fan fest or up in Iowa. There's a, uh, a Canadian uh, journalist uh, that uh, comes to all of our shows, you know, the Fan Fest, and he hung out with me and Bobby last year, um, and it was so cool. Uh, he's he's a, a very Haku. nice guy. I, terrible with names. A very nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Haku was always with us. Uh, you know, Barbara Goodish, you know, uh, Bruiser Brody's widow. Um uh, you know, J.J. Dillon's uh, daughter it was just like the group. Um, and it's a very cool week. You know, most of these happen on the weekend, but the CAC is actually during the week. You know, it's a Monday through Thursday type of thing. Uh, so it's, it's very cool. If, um, if you only go to, if you only can go to one event, uh, I would say go to that one because um, uh, it's a very cool organization. Uh, what they do helps so many retired wrestlers. Um, you know, it's just uh, a well-guarded uh, place, and uh, uh, it's so cool being there. But on a different note, did you get the other two pictures I sent to you, Nathan? I got the one where he's dressed up like Beetlejuice, and I got a very stoned Bobby D. <laughs> All right, put the very stone Bobby D picture on. <laughs> All right, so I sent this to you because Bobby D just did this either today or yesterday or something like that. Today. Uh, so this at is, work. <laughs> <laughs> at work. 
this is Bobby D. And then the other picture is what Bobby D would look like in Beetlejuice. Oh, okay. Let's get Beetlejuice out there. There's Bobby Juice. <laughs> I personally like the Amish beard. I, I'm thinking I need to trim it down to the Amish style. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the great thing like Bobby Juice. Bobby Juice. Instead of the red hair, instead of the red hair, I think you need to take a green one. Uh, I say maybe. Maybe. Maybe for Halloween, the Halloween show. That would be awesome. <laughs> yes. We we'll have to get the full face paint like that too, though. <laughs> but where am I getting a striped suit? <laughs> well, I know you have an orange suit, so you can probably I, get your hands on a striped suit somehow. I, I do have an orange one, the one from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I seen that and I was like, oh, I gotta take a snap of that picture and send it to Nathan <laughs> so he can put it on today. <laughs> it's gonna go on the thumbnail for our <laughs> our social media. There you go. Bobby Juice. Bobby Juice. <laughs> I even like that name. It's it's so bad, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you know the CAC is at the end of this month, but there are so many shows and we have one coming up this weekend. It's the return to the Townsville, the Fireman's uh, uh, Hall. Uh, it's also a bingo hall in case you're looking from the outside. Because I didn't know it was a Fireman's Hall until they actually told me the name of the building. Uh, to me, it's always been the bingo hall because it's uh, everywhere outside it says bingo. Uh, but uh, I don't know the matches except for one, and that's mine and Bobby's match. We're going against Attila, and we're going against um, Kowalski. Kowalski. I forgot it last time, too. Uh, so that's going to be a hell of a tag match. Yeah. I feel sorry for Bobby. But, but that's not yeah. all. Somebody else is going to be there, too, and I'm expecting blood on the camera. That's right. Haku is going to be there. But uh, like I said, I feel sorry for Bobby because Bobby is like the normal size one in the group. And, you know, he's got a, you know, at least he's got a tag team partner that can weigh in with those he's guys. You know, I'm, I'm and I'm not even that small. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, now you're going to know what it feels like to be me and the group. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's three brutes and one guy who can wrestle. And I'll just let you picture who the guy is who can actually wrestle. <laughs> Maybe Bobby Juice will have to come out this weekend. Hell oh, yeah, Bobby, you getting it? <laughs> <laughs> also, the last time we were at the Fireman's Hall, you guys should come anyway, because somebody, they do have gambling there, and somebody hit a $1,500 jackpot there while you guys are wrestling. Don't let my wife hear that. And they didn't even share. That's bad. They did not. Uh, well, I mean, the last time they uh, awarded uh, a guy with a trip to the CAC, so him and a, uh, a friend got airfare, got the hotel paid for, and uh, the table at the CAC. So, you know, that was one hell of a gift. Uh, you know, this this time around, like we said, Haku, uh, our great friend of the Federation promotion, is going to be there. Uh, I think he's going to be like... Uh, I wouldn't say a special ref. I would say he's going to be an equalizer, you know. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. You know, last time, uh, you know, Attila was trying to take uh, uh, take out Curtis Wild, uh, but they had, uh, you know, Danny Boy as a special ref. Um, and of course, uh, we tried to pick on Danny Boy, so uh, Ron Powers came out and handed Danny Boy an equalizer in the in the a part of a, a bat, yeah, so they both had some uh, steel bats there. Um, so you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's, wasn't it the, it's getting crazy. Wasn't it Attila that burned uh, Curtis Wild's eye? Put him out for a, a month? Uh, I don't think it was Attila. That's Stephen E's little trick. You know, so Stephen E got me with it as well. Got Gary with it. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I think uh, Curtis was the last one that got it. So, um, you know, but uh, I'm 
not too sure Stephen E is going to be there because according to the TV show this past Sunday, at some point, Travis Cook is coming back into the organization uh, because it's one, one night only. Lucky P, uh, you know, thanks to Gary Jackson, uh, broke Lucky P's arm. And um, so Lucky P is going to be out. And then Stephen E is supposedly back home in Saudi Arabia or wherever he's from. So they asked Travis Cook to come in and manage uh, both companies. Well, not companies, both groups. Uh, so um, you got uh, Lucky P's little group, uh, Dogtown Underground. You got Stephen E's group, um, uh, Damage Inc. Uh, so it's... it's Devastation Cook. Inc. Yeah. Devastation Inc. Yeah, there you go. Um, so Travis Cook is coming out. Too. Damage Inc. That was actually Metallica. Uh, so that's probably where I got that from. Uh, All we know is Travis coming in for one night, there's going to be some shenanigans and a hell of a lot of teasing. Oh, yeah. I know already won the action camera kid, guy, whatever you want to call him, that be prepared for blood. <laughs> uh, so you never know what's going to happen. And then, uh, you know, later this month, uh, I think on the 17th, we go back to uh, the racetrack. Uh, we go for the, was it the Indy Mama Rio 500? Yep, for the Indy. Uh, yeah, so it's, that's going to be extremely cool. You know, be at the racetrack. And then later that night, we're going to be in another place in St. Louis. Uh, and we went there last year. It's, uh, it's a very cool, so high end. I was going to say the name of it Soho. Soho. Uh, it's like a complex, uh, and this complex is kind of crazy because, matter of fact, this, the pictures from our last show there popped up on my Facebook today. And uh, this place, it's like it's a complex, man. There's a bowling alley in there. There's a full court basketball, uh, you know, court in there. And uh, on my time frame, I have a video of me and the Top Guns playing basketball. Um, but uh, they have a, a movie theater in there. Uh, they have a, a gym that has uh, a painting of Hulk Hogan. Uh, you know, and his iconic uh, picture of him ripping his uh, shirt off. And uh, they also had one of the Undertaker. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a place that's high end, but loves wrestling. And uh, last year, uh, I would say, I don't remember who he wrestled. Um, but, uh, Sean Vincent, uh, got his ass thrown into the swimming pool by Bob Orton Jr. Uh, but, uh, also Glenn Williams got thrown in at the same time. Um, so it was pretty fine. With the heat, I may jump in on my own. <laughs> uh, that's true. Uh, but it was fine because evidently Glenn Williams can't swim. Um, because one, the part of the pool that he got thrown into was probably three foot, and he was, you know, screaming, help, help, I can't swim. <laughs> and then one of the people working there says, stand up. <laughs> you know, so, so That's his own Robin Hood scene. I was just thinking, yeah. Robin Hood, men in tights, help, I can't yeah. swim. <laughs> it's like this deep. You know, it was funny too because I just uh, I was gonna watch that movie yesterday because it popped up on uh, uh, I I have Tubi, you know, which is that free TV, uh, along with you know Disney and all that other shit. I just don't go cable, uh, but uh, it's on Tubi, so I was gonna watch it the other day. Uh, so the we're night. doing the Bomberito and then Soho on the same day. Mm -hmm. Same day. So Soho was actually. Uh, scheduled first, but who's going to say no to NASCAR or IndyCar or anything at the racetrack? So, uh, you know, we did so well, SICW did so well for NASCAR that the owners of the track invited us back for two more days, you know, one in August, one in September. So even though we already booked, who's going to tell them no? So we're going to do a two-shot that day. 
so it's going to be interesting. Well, whatever. I say, and give credit to everybody talks about how good of a promoter Herb is to be able to pull this off. We're doing two shows in one day in two different states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, who can who who will tell you know the racetrack no, and uh, you know we've had a fantastic year so far in the last few years working for SICW has just been crazy and I was told not at the last show there's something else that I was a, a part of uh, through SICW and I was talking to Jason Herb's son and Herb's son says Jim you don't even know what else we have planned for the rest of this year uh, that uh, we already talked about, you know, and you know, last episode we kind of, uh, you know, talked about how I know they were talking to Shelton Benjamin and how they were talking to uh, Brock Anderson uh, to get people like that involved in SICW, uh, which shoot, we already had uh, the GM of SmackDown uh, on our show wrestling Attila when Attila was the champion, which is Nick Aldis. Uh, we've had, you know, Trevor Murdoch when he was the NWA champion come in and wrestle. Uh, so just to have these other people possibility coming in and wrestling, uh, it's just, it's crazy. And, you know, Herb Simmons, you know, came out here um, the last time and talked about how there's still a possibility of Hulk Hogan coming into the promotion uh, for the for the Mac show, uh, which the Mac show hasn't even been talked about yet because the date still hasn't been announced. Uh, so having the possibility of Hulk Hogan with SICW promotion, you know, that's, that's crazy. Um, you know, because wherever Hulk Hogan goes, the money goes. <laughs> um, but, and those you know, people, so, it's one that we cannot film. There's strict rules about outside videography. Well, uh, you know, pictures are all, are all welcome. But the video, they do a video. They they record. Uh, and sometimes some of the wrestlers sneak in a video uh, of the match. You know, I've seen my matches. Um, but... Uh, you know, last year they had Jake the Snake and they had um, uh, Mr. USA. Um, Tony Atlas? No, no. no Jim um, Duggan. Yeah. X-All Jim Duggan. Um, <laughs> you had the other Mr. USA, USA too. Yeah, he was Mr. USA. <laughs> um, you know, so. So you uh, also had Sergeant Slaughter, which is USA. Yeah, Mr. Sergeant Slaughter, too. So, I mean, it was crazy. Um, and for them to tell me, and, you know, I, I was talking about how I get sometimes the sneak peek on, on things that uh, we're involved in. But for them to tell me that they haven't even told me what's so cool that's going to happen still, um, you know, I, I can't imagine. I shoot, we're talking about Hulk Hogan coming into into the promotion so what's better than hulk hogan um you know but i guess we'll find out but as soon as we find out we'll let you guys know uh speaking of that before we get off the air i always want to try to say we're trying to break into this uh out of this algorithm or get into a new algorithm um uh, because um uh, we're still seeing a little hinder on people viewing our material and sharing our material uh, so we still, you know, still need that ego call of you guys helping us out and sharing this uh, podcast with everyone, uh, viewing it, giving us a comment. You know, uh, I talk about it on Facebook when I share the, the new weekly episode. You know, please don't like the Facebook status. Please go into YouTube, watch it, and wait, make the comment there. You know, um, and... Regardless, they're always liking or thumbs up in the Facebook status, and it just drives me nuts because 
I just want to say, please read. <laughs> you know, I love it that uh, that they do the comments on Facebook and give us the thumbs up and the likes and everything. But Facebook is not where we're trying to grow. We're trying to grow on YouTube, and we need all the help. So please like, comment, share. Uh, you know, get the word out. You know, there's no money in podcasting. We're not making a dime yet. So we're taking uh, time out of our own schedules. And trust me, you know, even Bobby's got a very busy schedule with all the stuff that he's doing for his kids. Uh, not just his kids, but the the school's kids of uh, the little doubles. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, Nate is running a family farm every now and then. Um you know, uh, some reason they have a lot of sheep on his farm. I, I don't know, but um, I heard he was trying to yeah, escape the funny farm. Uh, and strangely <laughs> enough, they all say Jim's name all the time. I just don't get it. Now, man, you need to clean the ears because it's not Jim, it's Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> 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 Anyway, you know, if you guys can help us get out of this rut that we're in, you know, uh, I talked about it before we hit record that we have 40 views on last week's episode. The episodes, uh, even the back ones, are still climbing. Like, people are still watching them uh, and still giving the thumbs up on YouTube. And it's so weird that, um, like, the current one is, you know, it's got more views than the last couple. So thank God on that. Uh, but uh, for as many fans as we have on Facebook and followers on Facebook, I would love it to be converted into the YouTube you know, side of things. Cause I th and for as many legends and current pro wrestlers and promoters and general managers and owners of federations that are fans, you guys need to help us out. You know, and speaking of helping us out, I just want to put out there that uh, you know we did uh, two episodes basically on the Iowa Waterloo Iowa's uh, you know Lou Fez George uh, uh, Tregas Hall of Fame and uh, I sent it uh, to them on Facebook I was kind of helping uh, you know we promote them they promote us but I didn't see anything off of that not saying that uh, I expected it but I was kind of hoping hey we're gonna plug you so you know, to uh, our friends at the CAC, because I got a lot of friends, uh, Rich Ear uh, Earling, um, you know, I, I had to give him props uh, a couple weeks ago when I see him in Waterloo, because, you know, when I had my uh, hospital stint, you know, when I got out of the hospital, the next day, he was on the phone with me. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And that's the vice president of the CAC. Um, and, you know, he was just checking up on me. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's very cool. Uh, and we got a lot of friends that uh, are in, um, I don't know what you want to call the group, but they're higher ups in the CAC. Like Barbara Goodish is uh, a part of it. Darla Staggs is part of it. So, and the board uh, members. Board members, thank you. But uh, we do these uh, special episodes on these Hall of Fames because, one, we believe in the Hall of Fames. I believe wholeheartedly in the Waterloo, Iowa, uh, in Herb's uh, uh, SICW Strand Fest in St. Louis Hall of Fame, in the CAC. You know, I believe in all three of these organizations. Um, so help us promote them. Uh, at the same time, we're hoping to get a little promotion from them as well. So it'd be great. Um, but other than that, uh, man, uh, it's been a great week. Um, getting shit done around here. Um, you know, wrestling wise, it's coming up. Um, you know, besides, I, I want to do a shout out to uh, uh, Dupo, Illinois. So, uh, August the 4th, uh, we do have TV tapings. So, August the 3rd, if you're at the wrestling show, save your ticket stub. You can go to our TV tapings for free with that ticket stub, and you'll be able to see four episodes. Uh, being aired, uh, well, being taped that day. However, I will not be there for all four uh, because I'm uh, being uh, taken.
taken to the Dupo. Um, it's a building out in Dupo. I can't remember if it's a fireman's uh, hall, uh, but there's a hall that uh, the acronym MOMS is going to be there. Uh, mothers. Uh, I can't even think of what it stands for. But basically, uh, this weekend, they're giving away school supplies to kids. So backpacks, notebooks, pencils, um, and there's going to be some food there and stuff like that. But uh, they're bringing me in uh, because um, our last TV taping and our last show, there was a young man who uh, was there for the very first time. And his mother belongs to this mom's group that's putting on this, uh, uh, basically giving back to the community. Um, and they bragged about SICW so much. And if you caught the TV uh, taping where uh, her son was actually like a co-host with Dr. Drew, um, he was having a ball with it. But uh, so she got to talking to the other parents in this mom group. And so they asked her if I can come out there and uh, sign some autographs and take some pictures with the kids. Uh, you know, just trying to get them ready for school again. So I, you know, jump on that. Jump and, boat? Huh? I said, wear your double belt. Yes. Yeah, so I'll be bringing both belts out there so they can get pictures with them. Uh, it'll be cool. It'll be a little cool thing for the kids, you know. Um, but, yeah, tons of shows coming up. You know, this last half of the six months, we are so booked up. And evidently, there's more bookings that we don't know about. So, hop on here for your latest SICW news, for your Hall of Fame news. Um, you know, I, you know what? I forgot about saying about the independent wrestling, independent St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame as well. I believe in that organization. So, uh, hands down. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, come on here, listen to other stories. Um, Find out about cool events like the CAC uh, at the end of next month. And all the updated uh, SICW shows, we'll post on those. Uh, but uh, what do you say, guys? Well, I was going to say, you always show off your uh, figures and stuff when you get them. My new uh -oh. addition will be my Hulk Hogan autograph. Dear American Bear. I say on his beer. Oh, yeah. That's the autograph there. Did you Thanks get my that? Friend, James. Uh, he was doing some autograph signings at a liquor store. That's his new beer that he's got out. And if you buy uh -huh. a case of beer, then uh, you get a picture and an autograph. And I had to work that day with my friend James Barrett. He went and got it. Got one for himself as that, well. That is awesome. You know, uh, uh, I was in Iowa that day, but I, I paid attention to uh, your, well, I would guess our uh, friends from uh, the Fan Fest that we hung out with, uh, crazy freaking people. Yes, uh, I seen 100%. all of them. Yeah, <laughs> I seen all their pictures with Hulk Hogan and that beer. And uh, I admit I was a little jealous because you know uh, I like Hulk Hogan a lot, uh, but I'm so cool with him because I've met him so many times and got his autograph on one of his first figures, Thunder Lips from Rocky Three. Uh, that's like my prized possession. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of cool. Plus, we might end up having him in the SICW not too long from now, so it's gonna be even better. Uh, Nate, anything from you? Nope, nope. All right, well, then from everyone at the Squared Ring Podcast, there it I hope is. You enjoyed this episode, <laughs> and I hope you, uh, again, please share it. Uh, share the episode, comment on the episode, tell us to go to hell if you want to on the episode, but please get it out there for us because we need to break this algorithm. This uh, algorithm is putting us down where we're not getting the followers uh, that we've normally been getting. Uh, the views are down, so let's get this out there. Help us out. Like I said, ego call. Uh, but uh, from everyone at the Square Ring Podcast, thank you. Um, it's been a hell of a week, and next week it's going to be even bigger because it's going to be after this uh, August 3rd show, so we'll have a whole bunch of news for you, um, news about Haku and see what he does, 
because uh, it's going to be very interesting. Every time he comes in here, it's a, it's a bloodbath or some sort. Um, but uh, we'll definitely bring you the results from this weekend's uh, wrestling show. But you guys have a good night. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.